The coincident economic indicators are at all-time highs. They don't show signs of slowing down. They're measuring real economic variables like income and sales and industrial production utilization, all the rest. But the leading economic indicators are negative. So isn't that a reason for the Fed to cut 50 bips? Well, the leading indicators suck. And the reason why that is, is that they're based on things that are not that relevant to what actually drives economic conditions. And in particular, the underlying premise under the leading indicators really is two different pieces. One, that manufacturing conditions are meaningful and lead the rest of the economy. And that's not true. And it's certainly increasingly less true today versus where it was 60 years ago or something like that when it became a meaningful composition. When GE was a, a player in the economy at Honeywell. Right. It's just not that big a deal. Number two, actually, I should say sentiment measures, which have been proven to be quite poor through the cycle. So if you look at things like ISM or things like that, it used to be a pretty good coincident indicator of economic conditions. And now... Over the last really 10 years, it's deteriorated rapidly. Part of that can be explained through partisan related issues. And then number three is the various interest rate measures that it's looking at are very dependent on a credit sensitive economy and a credit sensitive expansion. We do not have a credit expansion, credit driven expansion here. The private sector borrowing, both the households and businesses is at recession like lows. And so it's just not that helpful to understand what's going on with these credit measures because it's just not a big driver. We have an income-driven expansion, not a credit-driven expansion. So on all those accounts, it's just a bad indicator and it's proven to be a bad indicator over the course of the last couple of years.